Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering three of Allah's beautiful attributes, Al-Jami' Al-Samir and Al-Basir. Uh, these names uh, connotate one who unites, the one that is all-seeing and the one that is uh, all-hearing. So inshallah, to begin with Al-Jami'. Uh, though it, this name is not used in the Quran, it appears in hadith or the prophetic traditions, um, but we're given many examples in the Quran um, of how Allah unites and brings together, and especially with respect to the day of judgment, that Allah uh, will bring us all together, all of creation, um, all of humanity together um, on that day, Yom al -Din or uh, day of judgment or on the day of recompense. And linguistically, this uh, this word has the Arabic root, um, which means to bring something together as opposed to dividing it or taking it apart. Um, an example we, we see in our uh, tradition, in our faith, uh, we see terms like ijma, which has consensus, people coming together and uh, agreeing on uh, a concept or agreeing on something, or you have Jumu'ah, uh, the day of Jumu'ah, um, where people gather on, on Friday and have the obligatory prayers and service, um, but you have this, this uh, concept of coming together, not being brought apart. Uh, and Allah brings together um, that which may be similar, but also that which might be different and opposite, not just on the day of judgment, but also just uh, throughout our lives, throughout uh, the course uh, of history, um, and is also one that's not just in the physical sense of bringing together, but uh, anytime we talk about the names of Allah, think about the spiritual aspect as well. Think about the deeper meanings that these are divine attributes that are describing a creator that does not just operate within the physical realm, but operates in that which is unseen, that which we can't even comprehend. So also looking at the metaphysical, looking at the spiritual, that when Allah is al jami Allah brings together um, not just the physical, but also the internal, uh, bringing the hearts together, bringing um, that which is uh, unseen, bringing that together. And so uh, in the creation of this world and in the combining and assembling of creation, we see this name uh, being used and being uh, you know, put into work in a sense. And so in the Quran, we think about how different creation and creatures and things are shown to have benefit for one another. Um, you know, you see the examples of fruits and cows and different things like that having a, uh, a kind of a hidden benefit or a sort of benefit that's lifted up, uh, but being se very separate from humanity. So it's not just that humans are dependent on other humans for survival, but showing the other types of creation uh, which uh, humans are gathered with uh, in order to be able to survive. Um, and then the similarity and dissimilarity between uh, us humans and you know crops or animals uh, or livestock, yet seeing the harmony in the two, the the uh, necessity for uh, existence from one based on the other or mutual existence that's there. Um, we also see uh, apart from the that aspect of sustenance and survival and the gathering of the the completely dissimilar. You also see the the dissimilar with respect to the external features. You see the diversity of people. Uh, that is lifted up in the Quran, that we may, uh, we dispersed you and we've created you in different tribes and nations that you may come to know one another, um, that this is also a part of that gathering, the topography, people are placed in different places around the world, um, different predispositions, different traits, people have different personalities, um, you know, they're, they're not all exactly identical. And yet, uh, you know, in, if you look at this in the context, whether in the Muslim community or just in the uh, the, uh, you know, fraternity or uh, the brotherhood, sisterhood of humanity, you see that it is one humanity despite its differences. So as one humanity, despite all those differences, still gathered in a collective and to be raised as a collective. And we men mentioned um, that you have uh, the gathering on the day of judgment or Yom al or Yom al um, that you have this gathering, the day of gathering, which everyone is gathered together, regardless of who they were, um, rich, poor, uh, you know, evil, good, 
uh, Christian, agnostic, Muslim, all the stuff that they will be gathered um, for a lot, and they will all be uh, subjected to that judgment, um, a fair judgment. When we say judgment, we oftentimes have a very negative connotation of that, but knowing that that judgment is something that's balanced for everybody, that everybody will be given what is due to them, um, and as the Quran says, not, not an Adam's weight of transgression will be done to them in that aspect, so they'll be seeing the reward for even an Adam's weight of good, um, and, and, and that, that will be applied for everybody, um, and that Allah knows best because Allah is uh, the judge. Allah is the one who will uh, rule over this. And so apart from this aspect of the little aspect of al-jami, uh, Allah not only is the gatherer of the people and the creation and all of this stuff, but also the gatherer and the bringer together of hearts through action, uh, through supporting one another, um, we, we, the, reconcil the re reconciling of Heart, uh, of our hearts and our differences, uh, we, we see that this is how uh, Allah brings us together in a sense by working through us, work, having us work through Allah in different ways that uh, we, we come together because we're able to stand up for one another. We're able to find commonality beyond that which is superficially different. So when you see people standing up for one another, when they help one another, what, despite their differences, uh, when they support one another, when they reconcile a dispute between the two, uh, when they fall in love, when they do all these different things, uh, regardless of their differences, you can see this is Allah, not just uh, you know fostering the love and compassion between, but this is Allah also being a jamir and, and fostering that connection between the two uh, and gathering the two. So looking at it in the layers of it. So how do we live with this name of al um, which, as I mentioned, oftentimes is connotated as a gathering that's a singular event at one point in history, but seeing this as an active name like all of the other names in our life. So first and foremost, we want to reflect on how Allah brings everything and everyone together in this world and reflect on how Allah will bring us all together in the next. And what, what does that mean? For us beyond just the fact that it will happen. Um, what, what does this mean for us that how do we treat each other? If we're going to all be gathered together, we'll all be judged individually, but uh, alongside one another, we'll all be you know raised together in a sense. How, how will we relate to this, but how do we relate to people on this level? Um, we want to be people who bring others together. Again, the spirit of the names of Allah are ones that call us to do better and call us to uh, reflect as much uh, of that divine light as possible in our limited scopes. But uh, if Allah is the one who is all merciful, we want to be people that show mercy because Allah has given us mercy. And similarly, uh, as al jami uh, Allah is the one who, who will gather us together, who did gather us together, um, and who continues to gather us together in different ways. And so we want to be people who also gather others together um, with respect to first and foremost ourselves, gathering what is in our heart and what is in our uh, limbs and our uh, our you know our senses and making sure that we are a singularity that we're not all over the place that we are uh, put together that we are also agents of uh, bringing people together that we don't divide people up um, and we don't you know uh, cause any of this facade in a sense cause this fit not to you know, let people go in different ways. We want to be people who reconcile hearts, who bring people together and not divide them. And ultimately, we want to be people that don't lose hope. Uh, when we live with this name, we want to not lose hope because we know that Allah is the one who brought us into this world, who gathered us together, brought us into this world, and who will gather us together in the end. Um, and that in this gathering, Allah uh, will have mercy on us, inshallah. So we don't want to lose hope in that. And this name is one that gives us hope uh, for that which is to come, but also in the present day that uh, if we are isolated or if we are trying to find a higher purpose that Allah reconciles our heart and gathers us into a space where we can be, uh, you know, getting into a, a more productive space, getting into a space that we are intended to be or where we feel like we need to be. The next names that we have are Asami and al Basil. Uh, these names are the all-hearing, the all-seeing, and they're a reassurance for us when we might feel alone, when we might feel misunderstood or afraid, and they make us actually more vigilant of ourselves, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Um, that you're more vigilant of yourself because when you know that Allah is the one who hears and sees everything that you do, um, we learn to then guard and beautify our speech and our actions. It's like thinking, I was talking to uh, a friend that said that, you know, they, they're having a little bit of trouble. 
um, with respect to controlling their tongue and their language. Uh, and they, you know, maybe are a little bit more free with their, uh, with cursing here and there, but uh, they mentioned that only when they're around their mom, they never curse. They were like, no, my mom, you know, taught me <laughs> very, uh, very much uh, in a very stern manner not to curse. And I don't ever even think about going there. And similarly, in a sense here that uh, if we realize that Allah is the one who is watching us and not in a way that is creepy or anything, but in a way that is uh, from a lens of love, from a lens of wanting us to be the best that we can. Allah is not here rooting against us. Allah is rooting for us um, to, to be able to fall into the divine favor. Um, and when we know that Allah is watching and hearing and seeing everything, we want to see that as a sense to be mindful of that which we say. We know that Allah is at-tawab and that if we make a mistake, Allah is always there for us to be able to go to Allah with our mistakes and seek repentance or give repentance and seek forgiveness. Um, but this should cause us to guard, beautify our speech, our actions. Um, and as uh, the Quran says, that it lifts up these two characters, that uh, characteristics of Allah, of the all hearing, the all seeing, and proceeds it with that there's nothing like Allah. Um, so don't just think of it as big brother or an, a camera that's just watching you, but just think about the, the dimensions of this, that there's none other like Allah, but Allah is all hearing and all seeing, that, that there's this omnipresence that is there, um, especially that surrounds humanity. Um, and, and, and it calls for us to be better, not to, for us to be lower. So when we think about these names, we want to lift that aspect up that not only do we see just Allah as being having all power and, and being able to see us and, and hear everything, but to call us to be better because we're more aware uh, of this of this vigilance as well. So with respect to Samir, uh, we have the roots that mean to hear, to listen, to pay attention, to accept. Uh, Allah hears everything, including that which is beyond our hearing. Uh, we mentioned the seen and the unseen, the, the heard and the unheard, uh, and Allah also hears that which is in our hearts, which is in our most intimate whispers, which might not even be verbalized or vocalized. Um, so uh, there's two primary meanings to as-sami. Uh, there is the one that Allah listens, and then there's also that Allah accepts and responds uh, to that which Allah hears. Um, and know that Allah hears you. Um, there's a comprehensiveness to this that uh, Allah's hearing and awareness is of everything. It's not just limited to that which we can vocalize. Um, there's an example uh, in which this uh, hearing is one that is also very personalized, that it's not one that is just very generic. Uh, it is one that meets you where you are. There's the example of um, one of the Sahabiyat, Khawala binti Thahlaba, um, who in uh, who, who came to the Prophet some complaining about her husband um, and, and, you know, just the, the treatment he uh, gave her and, and wanting to leave him. And, the, and uh, in the Quran, uh, in Surah Mujadila, uh, woman, uh, the, the surah that's named after this woman, that, that she who complained or the, the complaining, the woman who had complained, um, that Allah mentioned in verse three, that Allah has heard the woman who has complained, that Allah um, hears above you know, uh, all that we can conceive of Allah hearing, uh, hears this one woman's complaint and lifts it up in revelation that is recited uh, to this day. And so just thinking about Allah meeting people where they are, hearing people where they are, regardless of what time period or where they were, um, and knowing that Allah will hear you too. If you if you also um, are mindful of that, that Allah hears you, um, and, and that your complaints or your sincere gripes uh, or, 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 you know, your laments are not going unregistered. Uh, Allah hears those, um, but Allah knows best in terms of when to be able to meet you with respect to those things. And we don't need to shout or be loud. Allah hears all things, even the most gentle things or the most soft or unheard things. Um, and he hears when Allah hears, it's also as a warning. It's, it, it's that Allah hears the evil as well of what people say. Um, is aware of it and hears that which people may plot in negativity, may plot in deception. Um, so we want to be aware of ourselves that what is, what are we uttering, what are we doing, what are we saying that might be negative, that might have this connotation of hurting other people, and we might need to be vigilant because it's not what Allah likes to hear. Um, and we uh, recognize that Allah listens to and will help those who turn to Allah. Um, and that Allah's hearing is one that is reassurance. It responds to us. It doesn't just, you know, just sit there and, and not uh, act on us. Allah uh, is all these attributes and more that Allah does act out um, to help us in this aspect. And so when we're lonely, we, we need support. We might feel unnoticed that we have the license to call out to Allah uh, and, and with the hope and knowing that Allah's as-sami, the, the hearing, uh, but also Allah is the one 
who uh, is, is, is the one, the respondent, Al-Mujib, Allah responds to our call, but we need to just first acknowledge that Allah is there and we believe in Allah in order to build that connection. And finally, with Al-Basir, there are meanings of this name which mean, uh, which pertain to Allah's vision and seeing um, the, the, the actual sight, like in a sense, like a physical vision, but then there's also the seeing of the inner realities, um, that Allah sees that which we can't, sees the good, sees the bad. Similarly with hearing, now just replace it with seeing, that Allah can do all of that um, and on the inside, seeing our struggles, seeing our pains, seeing our uh, baby steps, and, and you know, seeing those things and not diminishing the smallest of our efforts that maybe nobody else will see uh, how hard it has been for us to fast. Maybe nobody else will see that we're struggling with prayer, but we're praying it at the times. Maybe nobody else will see these things that we're sacrificing every everything just to uh, give this charity or just to make ends meet, Allah does see that. So at the end of the day, you know, it's not about recognition, fame, or acknowledgement from the world around us. It's about uh, that which Allah sees. And Allah sees everything, um, including when we struggle. And we, we lift this up that uh, we are not alone, that Allah is the one who's observing all these. And so knowing these names should ultimately make us more aware of how we conduct ourselves, but also um, that how we relate to ourselves in a sense that we aren't alone uh, if we truly believe that Allah is there because Allah is al-basir and al-samir. Um, so when we live with these names, we want to first and foremost lift up talking to Allah believe in Allah um, and have that relationship. It may not uh, feel kind of, it uh, may feel odd at first, but just knowing that uh, these are the attributes of Allah, this is the promise that Allah has and, and being comfortable enough to talk to Allah, um, guarding your speech, guarding your actions, accustoming what yourself to hearing and seeing that which is beneficial uh, and leaving that which is harmful uh, and ultimately keeping an ear out for what Allah is saying and what Allah has decreed. Um, and so being a good listener at the end of the day, uh, being a good listener, being a good observer, not just of yourself, not just of what Allah may have to say, but of all that which is around you. So Allah's uh, hearing, Allah's seeing, um, Allah's gathering, and all these names call us to be more present and call us to be more active in our spaces to ourselves and to the world around. So we ask Allah to not only gather us on the day of judgment, inshallah, in favorable standing, but uh, allow us to be those who live in the light of al-basir and to see uh, that which, uh, which, which may be wrong uh, and to see uh, that which we can correct and to be in the light of a Samir and to hear uh, and be vigilant of that which we say uh, and to be able to come together with al jami uh, in a positive state, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.